This is a microphone. This is a windshield, a music stand, a book, 100 Days, Poetic Memoir After Cancer, a script, poem number 99, Echo, and that's a mixer. In the next room is the recording studio. Steve Rush is in the next room editing the material that we worked on today. I'm here and he's there. And the job was to record 100 Days, this poetic memoir after cancer. This is the author's copy. I've kind of dragged it around a bit to record this. Now, what does this have to do with the writing process? Likely, you have listened to a book on tape. You may even be an audio book. We call it book on tape because it was originally recorded on cassette tapes a long time ago, and then it went to CDs, and now you can stream it on Audible or any of the platforms. I still call it a book on tape because that's where I started in my car years ago listening to, listening to audio books on cassette tapes. So this is really an audio book recording in Denver, Colorado at Steve Rush's studio. And Steve and I have been working for the last couple of days with this. He asked me to put the headphones on. So now I look like an official audiobook recorder. I will tell you, the work here with this audiobook reading is a little challenging because I've never done it before. I'm not an audiobook reader. I have a pretty good voice, but not an audiobook reader. The writing process. Why is it valuable to read your work out loud? Now, I'm at the end of the process. The book's been published. Now I'm creating an audiobook. I will say that I have read these poems aloud many, many, many times. So the value of reading aloud is it connects you in a similar way to the, the pen, reading, writing longhand. It connects you to your emotional tones in a way that you will never be able to connect with your emotional tones if you just sit quietly. When you're sitting quietly, you're connecting in a different way, a more meditative way. Both work really well, and they both work in accord with each other. So when I'm making this audiobook, I'm seeing things that maybe I would have changed. I'm okay with it. I let it go. And Steve is in the next room right now editing what I've done. He has a very good system. And this little speaker, although it's small, it has a lot of power. And the wind... I don't think he would want me to blow on it, but the pops, pop goes, pop goes the weasel, pop, 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 snack, crapple, snap, crapple, crapple, pop. You get the point. So when you are working in your writing process, I encourage you to read your work out loud. And what you will discover as you read it aloud, you'll start to get more familiar with your voice. You will also start to get a sense of how it will sound to others how it also will sound in your head or how it sounds in your head and how it will sound in the heads of others as well. It's an intimacy thing. And one thing to keep in mind when you first start to read aloud, you likely will be surprised if you record your voice and you listen back, you'll be surprised at how it sounds because it'll be a voice you haven't heard before. Oh, an unfamiliar voice. And you may even have an idea of how your voice actually, how your voice sounds. And then when you hear it, it may sound differently. So you get accustomed to your spoken, spoken word voice, and that's a good thing. So Steve asked me to sit here and read. He is listening in the other room. I read, and I try to get it so that it sounds good. Summer entices me. I am delighted by my mod. So did you see that? Ba, 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 ba. I didn't get it, right? So summer entices me. I am delighted with my body's return. I like that. That's pretty good. So he's listening in the other room. So maybe I don't like that. Maybe I go, I'm going to try it again. He'll go, okay, try it again. Summer entices me. I am delighted with my body's return. A couple of hours ago, I nibbled fries from the Shake Shack while admiring Plinz's magnificent sculpture named Echo. So I flubbed it again. 
I'm tired right now because we've been working all day. I nibble fries from the Shake Shack while admiring Plinza. It's Plinza. I'm trying to say Plinza. My, my eyes are not working very well at the moment. I nibble fries from the Shake Shack while admiring plin Plinza's. I'm still saying Plinza. I nibble fries from the Shake Shack while admiring Plinza's, Plinza's magnificent sculpture named Echo. Now, for some reason, I'm tired and my tongue wants to say Plinza instead of Plinza. So what do you do when you get tired and you're reading? You go away, come back later. And everybody has their own style. You have to find your way into it. I know some people that could just do cold readings and it's like they've read it a million times and they go through it, no mistakes. I am not one of those. Summer entices me. I am delighted with my body's return. A couple of hours ago, I nibbled fries from the Shake Shack while admiring Plinza's magnificent sculpture named Echo, a bone-white 44-foot head of a nine-year-old girl in a dream state staring south across Madison Park toward Broadway. So again, I'm tired, I'm fumbling around, but I wanted you to see what goes on with that. Now, when I'm rested, I have plenty of water, plenty to drink, it's a little easier for me. And then the last thing I would like to say is breath is important. Your breath is really important. So when you're reading aloud or when you're trying to calm down, when you're trying to find your next beat, take a breath. Be quiet and listen. Summer entices me. I am delighted with my body's return. How about you? What are you delighted with? <laughs>